The Ides of March, the day that will live in infamy. Well, at least for us classicists, because that's when one of the greats, Julius Caesar, was murdered during a meeting of the Senate in 44 BC in the theater of his great adversary, Pompey the Great, at the foot of Pompey's statue. And you know, I would be willing to bet that most people have heard of the Ides of March, and maybe some of them actually know that these Ides fall on March 15th. But this strange dating custom is just the tip of the weird, arcane method of reckoning days used by the Romans. So first, here are the names of the months. Many of these will look familiar to you, even in their Latinized form. We have Januarius, Februarius, Martius, Aprilis, Maius, Junius, Quintilis, Sextilis, September, October, November, and December. And some of these names, we don't really know where they come from. We just have conjectures about their origins, like Februarius and Aprilis. Some are named after gods, Januarius for Janus, Martius for Mars, Maius for Maya, and Junius for Juno. And some are named after numbers, Quintilis, Sextilis, September, October, November, and December. By the way, the Roman calendar originally began in March, so that's why December, the 12th month, has the number 10, Decem, in it. It was originally the 10th month. The reforms to the calendar by the second king of Rome, Numa Pompilius, changed the beginning of the year from March 1st to January 1st. In 44 BC, Quintilis was renamed to Julius in honor of Julius Caesar, and that's where we get the name for the month July. And in 8 BC, Sextilis was renamed Augustus in honor of the emperor Augustus. Of these months, only Martius Maius Quintilis, July, and October had 31 days. Februarius had 28, as it does today, and all the others had 29, not 30. This gives us 355 days in each year, about 10 days too short for our solar year. So every other year, the pontiffs in Rome, the main priests, would insert a month of varying length after February 23rd. The rest of February would be lost. This is called an intercalary month, a mensis intercalaris, a month that occurs within the typical calendar or between dates. In this way, the Romans would be able to reset their calendar so that the 1st of March more or less happened when it should, and farmers would be able to rely on the calendar to help them harvest their crops. This was later reformed by Julius Caesar, as we'll learn about in a little bit. Within each month, Romans actually had three different reckoning days for their calendar. To go along with the Ides, which are the middle of the month, either the 13th or the 15th, we have the Calends, which are the first of every month. And then there are the Nones, the ninth day before the Ides. Nones means ninth in Latin. And so they are either the fifth or the seventh day of the month, depending on whether the Ides are on the 13th or the 15th. The system is originally based on a lunar cycle. The Latin word for month, mensis, is actually related to our English word moon, and the term calends comes from the Latin verb calare, to call. Pontiffs would publicly announce the new moon in the comitia calata, and this would be the beginning of a new month. The Ides would be the time of the full moon, supposedly. Okay, so the calends are the beginning of the month, and the Ides the middle, either the 15th for months that have 31 days, or the 13th for all others. So there's an easy rhyme to remember this. In March, July, October, May, the Ides fall on the 15th day. The Nones the 7th, the rest besides, take two days from Nones and Ides. This means that in the other eight months, you subtract two days from 15 and you get 13, so that's the 13th for the Ides, and subtract two days from seven and you get five. One more thing before we move on. Uh, The Romans practiced inclusive counting. That means they counted the number they are counting to and the number they are counting from. Today we do exclusive counting, so we only count one of those. So for us, the seventh of a month is actually just eight days before the 15th, right? You know, we count 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. But for the Romans, the seventh is the ninth day before the 15th, since they counted 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. And that's how the knowns are the 7th and the 5th, because to the Romans, they are the ninth day before the 15th and 13th. 
Okay, I hope I haven't lost you with this yet because this dating system can be a bit confusing. So let's summarize up to now. The Romans had 12 months, whose names we use for our months in English today. Within each month, the Romans had three reckoning days. The first of the month, the Calends. They also had the Ides, which are the 13th or the 15th of each month. And then the Nones, nine days before the Ides, on either the 5th or the 7th. And finally, the Romans practiced inclusive counting. So they counted the number they are counting from and the number they are counting to. So now the dating system. When the Romans figured out a date, they would count up to the next reckoning day. So let's start with October 1st. This would be the, called the Calends of October. Calendis Octobribus, if you wanted to say on the October Calends in the ablative case. Or we can just abbreviate it Cal Oct. But for October 2nd, we will now count how many days until the knowns. So October has 31 days, so the Ides are on the 15th and the knowns are on the 7th. So October 2nd would be the 6th day, 765432, before the knowns of October, represented in Latin as ante diem sextum nonas octobres, abbreviated AD, then the Roman numeral for 6, non oct. We continue up. So October 3rd is AD, the Roman numeral for 5, non oct, until we reach the day before the knowns. Here, we depart from this system and use pridie, the day before, non oct. Then we have October 7th as nonis octobribus, on the October knowns. And October 8th is the eighth day before the Ides of October. That continues until we get to October 14th, which is the day before the Ides of October. Then October 15th is the Ides, and for the 16th, we now have to reckon our date based on the calends of November. So to the Romans, October 16th was the 17th day before the calends of November. And we continue on from there. This dating system is a bit different from what we are used to in the modern world. The inclusive counting bit aside, the dates in the second half of the month were referred to by the name of the next month. You know, like the fifth day before the calends of November was actually a date in October. Doesn't this seem overly complicated? I, for one, am glad for our modern system, but the Romans were big on tradition, even if it didn't make much sense and even if the tradition was outdated. That doesn't mean that they were against change. Julius Caesar, you know, the same Julius Caesar who was killed on the Ides of March in 44 BC, reformed the calendar system, and he fixed the number of days in each month, so there were 365 days in the year. And once every four years, February 24th would be repeated, this was their leap day, much like how our leap day falls on February 29th. This day, February 24th, was called bisextilis, twice sixth, because the 24th was the sixth day before the calends of March. And the Julian calendar was so good that we essentially use it today. It's just 11 minutes short each year, and so Pope Gregory the 13th in 1583 reformed it. So today we use the Gregorian calendar, which itself is heavily indebted on the Julian calendar, which itself came originally from the Romans.